Hi, hello, welcome to my podcast. My name is Nancy. Um, I'm also known as Unpaper Queen on Instagram. It's been a really long time since I posted last. Um, life happened. A lot of things have happened in the last 12 months. Um, I bought a house, I got a dog, my two-year-old now sleeps through the night, um, and I feel a bit more like the old me. Anyway, no need to bore you with all of that. Um, I also got rid of the blonde and now have curly hair. Um, I think I've always had curly hair and just never known it. So I'm learning to embrace it. I have a lot of things to show you. Um, just because I wasn't posting here does not mean I was not making. I have made oodles of things and I'm just going to show you a small portion. Um, I've got lots of finished socks to show you and some cute little things and then my favourite make of 2022. I will post another podcast on the things I would like to make this year um, and maybe something with all the yarn that I currently have in my stash to show you and their plans. But they're for future videos. I'm going to start this morning with some works in progress and then I will show you my finished objects and then I've got a few things that I would like to show you that I'm going to make um, soon. But we might start with um, the socks I have on my needle. I've got two pairs of socks on my needle, needles currently, um, I guess the plural because there's more than one. Um, this sock is a So Basic sock by Summerlee Knits. It is a stripy sock. Um, I switched out and did an afterthought heel because I thought that would be better with the um, stripes. I also um, I dyed this yarn myself. So this is a four ply merino sock from the Nundal Wool Mill, which is in Australia. Um, it's very soft. I loved it. It was very nice to dry to dye. Sorry. Um, and these colours, I this is a I guess it's a it's not a practice sock because I make socks all the time now, but it's, um, I decided I would make a sock to see how these colours went together because I am also making a jumper using these colours, which I will show you soon. Um, and I've made one sock and I've made this much on the second. This, this sock was a bit of a slog. Um, I don't know if it's because the stripes, they seem to take forever, um, I do think if I made stripy socks again, I would do more than a five row sock because it sort of just doesn't look like enough. Um, but it fits, it's very warm. I love it. Um, so that is my first sock on the needle. I'm sorry, I dropped the yarn. Um, very pretty, I love it. Um, my second sock on the needles currently are the um, Field of Sunflower Socks by Stone Knits um, and I am loving these. They are very cute. Now I made the size 3 which is the biggest size with these. I started with the size 2 because I have a 9 inch circumference foot but they didn't fit. I couldn't get them over my heels so luckily I'd only done one of the pattern repeats and I just ripped it out and I started again because I am now learning to make things fit properly and to do them properly myself and I'm halfway through a row. Um, I'm going to do an afterthought heel instead of a short row heel because I think that looks better and I don't like a short row heel at all. Um, so I will put that heel where my markers are. Um, I'm hoping that I will be able to finish this repeat and do the toe but I will measure and make sure that that will be enough. Yeah, these are very nice to knit. Um, this is also wool from the Nundal Wool Mill. So I think this was Sunburst and this was definitely Cornflower. This colour was not what I expected at all um, on the from the screen. It was a bit darker, more like a petrol colour. But anyway, I think they look good together. Um, they coincidentally are the high school colours of one of the boys' schools here in Toowoomba. <laughs> um, that's an accident, definitely, for sure. Um, but yeah, so they're my two pairs of socks that are on the needles at the moment. I am really enjoying socks. I have embraced sock making in the last six months. Um, it's nice to have your own knit socks for winter. 
The next thing I am going to show you is something I've had in my needles for a really long time. Um, so I bought the yarn for this jumper in November, October. Whenever this pattern was released, I ordered yarn and cast it pretty much straight on. I This is the Elf and Glow Sweater by Deirdre Knit. Um, I just have the sleeves to go. I really love this. Um, I'll just move back a bit. I love this pattern colours. So I ordered, I had some leftover mohair from Woolen Works in maybe the colour, oh, I've got no idea. It was a, in her, oh, in her, once is ink collection. Um, and I used this for something else and I had heaps of this leftover so I started with this as my mohair colour because you don't need much and I didn't really want to water another um, ball and then the fade or the the pink and yellow yarn is also a woolen works from her last Bright Birds collection and then the blue and the grey are a five ply sock, oh no not a sock just a five ply from Bellissimo which I think I got at Skein Sisters. Um, I really love this jumper. However, I do this thing where I pick measurements I would really love to be, and maybe not so much the measurements that I am. And coincidentally, this jumper is a bit tight. Um, I won't bore you with it, but I am just putting it in a bag and leaving it for a while because maybe it will fit one day. <laughs> And if it doesn't, then I will frog it. I <laughs> I got to about here and then decided that this was too tight because this is my first colorwork project ever. Um, so I unraveled it. So I've already unraveled half of this jumper before and the thought of unraveling the rest of it really upsets me. So it's currently just living in a little project bag in my drawer or in my cupboard, I mean. Um, and it's sort of a, I'll get back to it when I get back to it. It's sad. It's sad when you make things and they don't fit. Um, but I'm sure I'm not the only person that's ever done this. <laughs> I also, um, now this, the next thing I'm going to show you is a project that I am super excited about. I, I think this is the passion that made me want to start knitting. Um, uh, it was released in 2019, I think, and that's pre-pandemic. So when I saw this pattern pop up on Instagram everywhere, I thought to myself, that would be a great jumper to learn to knit. And it has taken me five years now, f four years, four years, um, to learn to knit and to cast it on. So this is the jumper that I was telling you about before with a sock that I learnt to or not learnt, I I bought some 8-ply merino, I think it's a superwash, from, also from the Nundle Wool Mill, um, and I dyed some colours. Now I had lots of trouble dyeing the green, um, I started by trying to just put it in a big pot and the dye absorbed in the top of the skein and didn't in the bottom, so I have three balls of yarn that I will have to use for other projects and I have used one I used one to make a little vest for my little um friend hunter for his birthday and it is lovely and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the others maybe I'll make Ruben a jumper at some point maybe in the next size because we have quite a few things made in this year's size um but this this is the Sorry, I'm just tucking all of the loose ends. This is the Solder Toner Crop, and I hope I said that right. Um, by Boil and Boil and Knits. Oh, I, I definitely said that wrong, and I'm sorry. I will link that on the screen. Um, and I am loving this so much. I originally started with the pink where the white is, and it just um, the copper colour absorbed it, so I ripped it out and started again. So this is another jumper I have knit this much twice. And I guess that's okay because knitting a jumper that you will keep for a long time should be perfect. 
Um, however, this jumper is also going to be a bit tight. I made the size three because I have a hundred, or oh, maybe a ninety-eight centimeter bust, and it was for a hundred centimeter bust. But I always forget that my boobs and waist are the same, and then my hips get bigger. So I probably should have made a size four. But again, this is a long way from being finished, so. I'm not super worried about it. So um, in the pattern it calls for five um, repeats of the of this stitch here. And I think I'm at three, but I will definitely be making that longer. And I think I'm going to make it into a jumper, so have longer sleeves. Because this is an eight ply merino, which is what the pattern calls for. So. I'm not really sure how you make an eight ply work as just a top. Um, I live in southeast Queensland, so it is definitely not cold. It gets cold, but it's not cold enough to just wear a, a crop. Um, so, um, yeah, but it is coming along really nicely, and I really like it. Um, it uses three point seven five needles, which is a small needle for me although i've been knitting a lot of socks so um it doesn't seem as bad <laughs> um but i really do love this i am so excited for this to be finished and to be able to wear it i spent a long time looking through posts on instagram and ravelry to see what kind of color combination i would like um when I first bought yarn at the end of 2021 to start dyeing myself, um, it was for this jumper. And if I had made it then, it would have been a very different colored jumper than right now. Um, but I'm looking to put some more tonals and not basic colors, but a bit more, um, not even muted colors, just different colors in my wardrobe for winter this year. Um, yeah, but that is my solar turner crop. I am very excited about it, and I am sure you will see it again here sometime soon. Oh, there's the tape measure I've been looking for. I clearly haven't been knitting this for a little bit. <laughs> um, that I think is all. Oh no, yes, no, that is all I have um on my needles at the moment. I. I'm going to show you something that I started knitting and I'm definitely going to frog. Um, this yarn I also dyed myself and it is also an 8 ply. So this yarn um, was going to be a, a weekender hat. Weekender hat? By Petit Knits. But I, um, and it's not the hat that I don't like. The one by one rib I am not a fan of um, because it's a shitload. But... It just, the colours, I did not think would be a very good hat. Um, it kind of reminds me of McDonald's. My husband assures me that it is not looking like McDonald's. Um, I'm sorry, the light's crappy in my dungeon of a sewing room. Um, so I got to the first repeat, or the first um, section where you do different stitches, and then I decided that I just, I just didn't like it. Um, so I'm going to rip it out and I think I'll make a little vest for my friend's other baby. <laughs> um, but that's okay. It's okay to not finish things you're not ever going to wear. Um, now, what I'm going to show you next is something that I guess is technically finished, but I'm going to have to frog half of it and redo it because I, I broke the needle that I was using. And then I couldn't replace my wooden needles in the size I wanted, so I just bought a pair of um, Zings. I can't think of what brand that is. Anyway, they're metal needles, and I didn't realize that if you... Your tension can be very different until I finished the second glove. So this is the Petite Knit Penny Gloves, um, and this is the size I did in the wooden one, and this is the size I did in the metal one. And when I finished it, I was like, what the fuck? I don't understand what happened. 
and classic Instagram came through and assured me that it was not my knitting it was just my tension in the different needles so this will be the glove when finished um I shortened this so I originally knit the whole glove to pattern and it came to about here and I just didn't feel like I needed a glove that long with my hair in it in Toowoomba for winter so I did some little knitting surgery and I put my needles in and I snipped it and I cut it and then I just picked it back up at this end and recast it on and then I snipped it and um, did a little bit of the same stitching to bind off so that it matched. Um, so I guess in the positive note is that I will be able to just pick up this um, and unravel the rest of this um, when I get around to it. I haven't actually ordered the needles yet to finish this because I just haven't. <laughs> I um, They were out of stock for quite a while and I know they're back in stock but I have had so many other things going on that these just got sidelined um, for now. And that's okay, it's okay to sideline. Maybe when the weather starts to finally cool down I will be reaching for them and hoping that they're finished. But for now they are just sitting in my pile in front of my TV. Because <laughs> um, they can. So I am now going to, I'm sorry I'm not looking at the camera. I'm going to show you some things I have finished recently. Um, I have quite a nice little box of socks here and I might go from oldest to newest because I can. Um, this is all these, these are all the socks I've knit in the past and I know you've seen these ones before but they need some surgery because they fell apart and I can't quite work out how to fix them yet so they are tucked away and you have definitely seen these so basic socks and they definitely have gotten a lot of use they're all um, felt together at the heel I loved wearing these last winter and they're the only ones you should have seen because I haven't finished I hadn't finished any others um, after that these are the Summerlee Knits um, shorties um, which I cast on in April last year and it took me like eight months to finish them which is ridiculous because they're such a short sock um, this yarn is a sock yarn that I got from Jenkimi. Oh, I really don't remember the name of the brand, but I'll put it up here um, so you can have a look at her yarn. It is delightful and it is quite a thin sock yarn um, where the nundle stuff is quite fluffy. Um, but they're quite cute and I did wear them. They're a bit dirty on the bum. <laughs> Uh, then I made some more So Basic socks with the um, yarn called Karma Chameleon by Woolen Works. Um, I really like these. They're very soft and very nice and I haven't worn them yet because I made them after it got cold um, last year. I mean, after it got warm. <laughs> Why would I wear them in the cold? <laughs> Um, and then the next yarn, the next pair of socks I made are also another pair of So Basic socks by Summerlee Knits. And I love these. So this is the colorway um, Peacock with that orange peaches and cream yarn from, the, from my last pair of socks. Um, the Peacock is, oh, it's a little bit more green on my end. I'm sorry, it's not showing very well. Um, this is also a Woolen Works yarn. I, if you've watched my podcast before, you know how much I love her yarn. Um, so much so I ordered some last night. <laughs> um, don't tell my husband that. <laughs> um, and I haven't worn these either because, again, too warm. It's way too warm here. In fact, I feel like I'm sweating right now in my dungeon, um, which is sort of underneath my house, so I don't know why it's so warm in here. Um... And then these next socks I'm going to show you are my first cast on of 2023. They're definitely the first cast off as well. And I'm sorry, they're full of grass for some reason. These are socks I definitely posted all over my Instagram when I made them. I dyed this yarn as well. I used the Nundle Wool Mills Ball Play sock 
and the colour Galar and Desert P. The Galar is definitely not as dark as it should be, but that's what I wanted. These are the I Heart Socks from Stone Knits um, book that I got for Christmas. And I love them. I love them so much. I, like the other pair of socks I was telling you about, started these in a size 2 because my foot measured a size 2 in her chart. But I got to about here and I couldn't get it over my heel. So I ripped back and started again. And I'm so glad I did. I'm a bit worried that they might um, become a bit loose later on, but that's something I can deal with later on. Maybe I could put some elastic in here. But these are so freaking cute. I love these so much. The wool bloomed so much. And it just, there's such an easy knit to knit um, to just keep going and going and going. Um, I couldn't recommend her book more. I love it. There are so many pairs of socks in that book that I would like to make. <laughs> um, so little time though, I guess. I have more. Don't worry, I have more. Um, and then these. These are Summerly Knits dot socks, um, and I knit these in a Nundle wool mill um, yarn as well, a four ply sock in colours I can't remember. Um, they feel a bit oily, like the wool wash I used was too lanoly. Um I like these too, they're very cute. I didn't do very well um, remembering to slip the stitches in the thing but anyway um I think I'm gonna know that if anyone else is looking that close at my feet then they have a problem <laughs> and should turn to OnlyFans which I'm not on <laughs> um and then these these um are a little pair of socks which now that I'm talking about I should have looked up the name of the pattern but I will put that along the bottom here <clears throat> my friend Maddie reached out to me and said she would like to make her daughter a pair of socks and um, asked if I knew of a pattern. So I jumped on Ravelry and had a look for a kid's sock pattern that was easy and had a heel flap because that's, again, what I think is one of the easier heels to do. Um, and I found this pattern. Again, I've got no idea what it's called right now, but I will link it. Um, and so this is the size two to three pair and they fit very well on my little boy. And I also dyed the yarn. I dyed some for myself and some for my daughter. Um, some for my friend, sorry. I don't have a daughter. I have a son who will love purple and blue socks. Um, they didn't have, it wasn't purple, it was pink. I splitzed in it and it went purple. But they are so cute and they were so easy. I think I made these in a week. I definitely should make more pairs of these. Um, with all my leftover yarn, because I didn't use very much yarn either. It's a very, very quick, 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 quick knit. Um, so if you're looking for a pair of socks for a kid, I would recommend these. Now, oh no, I've got two more um, recent finishes. So, if you are following me on Instagram, you'll have seen this. This is a Petite Knit, for petite knit Stockholm Slipover Mini in a size three for my little boy. I love this pattern so much. I think I made six of these last year, not all for my son. Um, I gifted a few and it is just the perfect little pattern for little kids. Um, it's very easy. Don't be fooled by the four star hard rating. It is definitely not. That is just for this wedge here, I reckon, and everything else is easy as. Um, this is an 8-ply merino by Woolen Works, again in the colour Peacock. This is so cute. Um, I think I have enough left to make him a pair of little gloves, so I think I will make him matching gloves to go with them. Um, in South East Queensland, it doesn't get super cold in winter, so I tend to knit a lot more vests than anything, because vests are not only my favourite thing to wear, but practical. <laughs> rather than big jumpers that you have to take on and off. At least you can put a coat over a vest. Um, which leads me to the other make. This is the latest thing I have off my needles. This is a um, Ollie's Everyday Slipover by Hannah G Knits. And I've made this pattern before. Um, I made the size two. 
I added an extra increase at the underarm and three stitches at the underarm on both sides because the last time I made this it didn't fit my son for very long at all. So I just made it a little bit wider so that it would fit him for a little bit longer and I probably could have done an extra um, increase in the V because I don't think that this is very big either. But I bloody love this vest. This is so cute. I also dyed this yarn. I like dyeing yarn. Um, this is also an 8-ply merino from the Nundal wool mill. I bought like four 400 meter cones so I have a fair bit of it. Um, and I made, I used the colour, um, I used the colour mango and then I sprinkled in both the mango colour and some copper. I ran out of yarn right at the, um, when I had to add the, the cuffing, or the ribbing I should say. So I had a stab at dyeing it again and I think I matched it pretty well. I don't think you can see that they're any different. If anything, they're slightly darker at the sleeves, but and the neckline, but I don't think anyone will notice, especially because my toddler runs around too fast to take photos of him, so there'll be no point in worrying about it. <laughs> um, but this is incredibly soft and I do love it. Now, this is something that I made last year in 2022. Um, I also dyed this yarn. And this is my favourite knit of 2022, and it is the um, Stockholm Slipover V-neck by Petite Knit. It's so soft and so warm and so crinkled. Sorry, I just whipped it out of the drawer. Um, it's an orange and red. I mixed the colour Sweet Desert Pea and maybe Citrus? together and there's a video of me on my Instagram making that as well. Everyone thought it was noodles <laughs> in my frying pan. Oh it's so cute. And I have got enough of this mohair to re-dye a um, bit more of the four ply to make Ruby a vest as well. Which I might do. I might make something else with it yet. But this is my favourite. I'm sorry it's so crinkled. Um, I love this. I bloody love it. It's a great great knit. I know that people really hate on Petite Knit and her boring beige-ness, but I feel like you can make things not boring beige um, and still use her patterns. And I know that her patterns aren't as size inclusive as others, but I love them, so I'm sorry if you hate them. Um, right, well that's all the knitting I have to show you. I do want to show you something that I sewed recently and something that I plan on making as well. Um, so, again, if you've been following my Instagram, you will have seen my Ilford jacket. Um, so, I used a duck, a cotton duck from Spotlight, and I lined it with a flannelette. I would try it on and show you, but it is so hot and it's too warm to try this on. Um, I I am um, denied at what size to make this because everyone I saw who had made it. Um, said that they sized down or could have sized down. So my bust is a hundred and no, 98 centimeters. It's gone down. Um, and the finished pattern measurements for the medium, which is what I made, was 122. So I decided that I could make the medium. And it wasn't until after I cut out the sleeves that I saw a little post about um, increasing the sleeve size by one size to accommodate. So I think for my next one, I will increase the sleeve size to large and make the top as a, um, oh, I'm sorry, I've got food on me from my three-year-old. Um, and I've lost my train of thought. Sorry. I would keep the medium and make the large in the sleeves. But this fits and it is great. And it, it'll be fine because it's um, it's a more of a fitted jacket. I used a placket sleeve um, and I, so... <laughs> I again, I think I just wanted to sew it and um, it had been on my mind for a while so I cut it out and then I thought, shit, I haven't adjusted my sleeve length because I have tiny arms. So it fits um, it fits sort of just enough without the, the end, the cuff on the end. So instead of sewing the two pieces together for the cuff, 
I just fold it in half. So the cuff is half the size it should have been, um, which was fine. I also did a placket sleeve, which I won't be doing on the next one because it was a lot of work um, and involved hand stitching and I really hate hand stitching. <laughs> but I think it looks tidy and it looks neat and it'll get a lot of wear. And then I ummed and art at what kind of pockets I should put on it because I love pockets. So I went with a top pocket um, with a pencil pocket and then I did um, the the diagonal pockets or the ones with the for the sleeves and I lined this pocket with um, flannelette so that my hands could be nice and warm inside them. And then on this side, I sewed in a sneaky inside pocket um, before I sewed the lining, before I sewed it together. So the other ones I just sewed straight on so I could get the placement right, but this one I sewed in before I did it all together. And I really love it. I think that this will make a nice, warm, cozy jacket over a vest. Um, for winter and I recommend this pattern a lot um, so much so that I am going to make a coat using it as well I did struggle with the sleeve um, sewing the sleeve here um, and I think that was just reader error more than anything and I think I will try harder with this one so I bought this coating from Potter & Co last year when I was in Perth and it is it's beautiful it's a um, uh poly blend and you probably can't see that because it'll be backwards um it's a wool nylon acrylic poly blend um and it's a 340 gsm so weight so it's nice and thick um and it was only 55 dollars i got it as a remnant so it was only 55 dollars um and i'm gonna make a coat out of that and i've got some satin behind me or behind the camera i should say that i'm going to line it with um and I can't decide what I'm going to do with the pockets and the lining, but I thought I would wait a little bit longer now that I have sewn that other one. Um, purple's not usually my colour, but I figured it was very cute when I saw it in the shop, so I had to buy it. And it's only a two metre piece, so hopefully I'll manage to get a longer coat out of it. When I cut the pattern pieces, I cut both sizes, well, I marked both sizes so that I could fold it up and and um, I'm going to have to cut another piece. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and I'm sure if you're following my Instagram, you'll see it. And I will definitely be showing it here at some point in the future. But I have no plans to make it just yet. Um, so that this reaches the part of the podcast where I have shown you everything I have made. I have made oodles and oodles more. And I would love to show you oodles and oodles more. Maybe I can do a whole separate podcast just on... Oh, sorry. Just some things I made in 2022 because podcasting became very hard for me. Um, finding time, uh, I moved house, I, my, uh, we struggled with my two-year-old anyway. He's a great boy, I love him very much. Um, but if you're a parent, you'll know kids are hard and it's okay to say you're struggling. <laughs> anyway, um, so now I'm going to show you a few little things that I plan on making this year. Um, there's definitely some vests in there. I might even just show you a couple and I can show you a few um, later on. But I ordered some yarn from, again it's backwards, from Tititi in Finland. And funny story, I ordered this on like a Thursday and I got it the Tuesday after. I got some something from Spotlight. Um, the day before, so Wednesday, and it didn't come until the next Monday. So this came from Finland across the world, express shipping, faster than something could come from Melbourne express shipping, which says a lot about Australia Post. Um, you crap Australia Post. <laughs> um, anyway, I was looking for some Peruvian Highland wool, and this was the only website I could find that had the colours I wanted in the quantity that I wanted. So, um... I ordered something and then I ordered something for something else because I couldn't help myself but I ordered some Peruvian Highland wool in the colours oh my word I don't know what the colours are um this was the colour coral and I can't remember what colour this was um but I'm going to make myself and Reuben a stripe overload tee with these 
And then I also ordered the mohair because I was there from, also from Ilicona, in these two colours as well. Which I think will go amazingly with these. Um, this might be my next cast on, but I think I need to cast a few things off before I can cast anything on. But yes, I am so excited to knit these things. Look how cute those two colours are going to be together. I originally wanted to do a red and pink just like um, the London Loom made. I think that I adore that jumper so much. But I also had intrusive parent thoughts and thought why not make something that I could match ribbon in because um, we're cute. <laughs> cute together. Um, so I did and I while I was on that website I thought um, why not order something for something else while I'm paying for shipping and shipping wasn't expensive it was 22 euro so that was maybe maybe $40 in shipping to come from Finland in five days I think is an excellent price and the tracking was amazing so I also ordered some <coughs> some Senna's yarn, um, Fritters yarn in these three colours to make myself a Hilda vest. Um, this will be my main colour and then I'm going to mix and match these two to finish it off. Um, I have no plans on casting this on anytime soon but it will be in my stash when I am ready for it. And that will be a colourwork vest which will be my first colourwork that I will have to pearl some. Mm. Anyway, I've ordered the patterns for both of them because they were both on sale at the time that I ordered them. And, um, yeah. So, um, I might just get out some other things and I'll show you plans for other things. Um, just hold on a second. I have some other yarn. I'm going to show you three other, maybe four other pieces of yarn that I'm going to make into things. I bought this Subline Baby Cashmere Silk Merino in... Um, Perth last year when I was visiting my husband's family and my friends. It is this beautiful fuchsia colour, which I'm not quite sure is coming up over the background. Um, and I plan on making a Sophie scarf out of this. I've got two balls and it might well be the next thing I cast on. The next little thing I can take to work, I guess. Um, after I finish those other two pairs of socks. <laughs> anyway, I cannot wait for that to be done. Um... The next two pieces I'm going to show you are for socks. I bought these both from Wool and Works. They are the Extra Fine Merino Nylon Sock. This was the colour Radioactive and again, it's really not coming up as what I would want it to. It's like a really lime green, crazy green. Um, and this is the colour neon neon lights maybe um and it's hugely speckled i have a pair of ruffle socks in my um ravelry queue that i can't remember the name of but i will add a photo somewhere here and i think these are going to be those i really like this i think it's very cute and i am very down for ruffle socks and boots despite what everybody at work says to me about ruffle socks <laughs> They can be for more than two-year-olds. <laughs> um, and if I had a two-year-old girl, she would be in ruffle socks all the time. But I don't. I have a boy and we deal with trucks. Mm. And I love it. Um, and then this, I bought this, um, this kid silk to go with the yarn I used for a vest, which I have not shown you here, but I think I've put on my Instagram. It is the colour... I don't know what the colour is. Um, but I dyed some very cute sock merino. And I think I'm going to make a pair of penny gloves for my sister-in-law. And that'll be exciting. Um, but those are all my plans for now. And I might call it that. Because my phone is telling me that there is no storage left on my phone. And I'm terrified that this video will stop filming. <laughs> um... But thank you if you got this far. Thank you for watching and um, joining in and coming back. I'm sorry it's been so long. I'm 
planning on doing more videos in 2023 um, showing you the things I've been making and I'm going to make. Uh, thank you for listening and watching and I hope you come back soon. Let me know what you're making in the comments. I'd love to hear from you or if you've got some great vest patterns that you think I should try, I'd love to hear from you. But anyway, have a happy Sunday. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.